I'm standing here this morning in Central Lobby uh, with Malcolm Hay, the curator, curator of works of art in the Palace of Westminster, and we're going to talk about one of the most important paintings in British political history. It shows the King Charles I breaking into Parliament with the intention of arresting five members uh, who had been challenging his authority. Uh, can you tell us, Malcolm, why, why is the painting here? The corridor you mentioned links the House of Commons debating chamber behind us and in front of us the House of Lords uh, chamber. So it's the main, if you like, the spine of the Palace of Westminster. And it's where the works of art, we've got six at uh, one end of the corridor and eight the other. And they chart that key period in English history uh, between the start of the Civil War leading up to the Glorious Revolution. So this picture then, it, what we're going to look at now, shows the king breaking in. The members over many years have been challenging the right of the king to rule in an absolute, as an absolute monarch. Uh, and this is really the, where it comes to a head. And the king finally challenges parliament, tries to arrest these members. And shortly after that, in August of 1642, he moves to Nottingham, the king, and raises his standard and the civil war begins. Well, the, the painting done mm. in the Victorian era, it was done in the 1860s, mm. um, rather plays down um, the actual feeling of, on the day um, where members of Parliament were, were very aggrieved that the King had, had stormed into their debating chamber wanting to find the five members. Mm. I think it's suggested in the plaque underneath the picture that in fact if the members hadn't fled, people would have drawn swords and you would have had blood on the floor of the House of Commons. Do you think that's right? Well, the members were certainly persuaded to leave. Uh, the, the members, generally in the chamber, you know, yes. knew what was going to happen. Yes. They'd been tipped off by Essex. Yes. The king was hot-footing it down to the debating yes. chamber. And yes. the five members, certainly four of the members, yes. um, knew you know, the way the wind was blowing. Yes. And they, they escaped. And the fifth member, Strode, uh, took a little bit of, little bit of pushing um, to, to get him out of the chamber. A bit like a modern MP being told to leave the chamber by the speaker and doing it reluctantly. But interestingly, the king left his troops outside, didn't he? He left his troops outside. He then went into the chamber. He, yeah. he then um, approached the speaker, Speaker Lenthal, yeah. direct, yeah. asking him where the five members had gone. Yeah. In the painting, we've got Speaker Lenthal um, down on bended knee in front of King Charles, standing uh, right next to the speaker's chair. And we've got the clerk of the House of Commons, John Hatzell, uh, writing down word for word um, the exchange between the King and, um, and the Speaker. But it's a day of immense drama in the debating chamber. And that record still exists, doesn't it? We still have that in the... the it's region. in the parliamentary archives. Yes. A very important record and again one demonstrating the importance of the whole event. And of course after the Civil War, Parliament really is forever growing in its power and the, the king's power forever declining until you get to the state of constitutional monarchy that we have today. So can you tell us a little about the painter? Well the, the painter was one of the great uh, Victorian painters, Charles West Cope, uh, who began his association with the building in the early 1840s. He won a competition to design paintings for the palace. Uh, he won a, a premium of £300 and spent the next 20 years engaged in painting pictures for the House of Lords. And this was painted fairly late on in his career here, in the late 1860s. He survived, in fact, until 1890, and he came back a number of times to retouch these, these grand mural paintings that um, kept on failing and, and needing, needing continual work. So he made a real contribution to the works of art in the Palace of Westminster? He made a vast contribution. He painted the entire mm. corridor here uh, of the Civil War uh, murals. He painted two frescoes in the House of Lords debating chamber. So he would have ended up having a good knowledge of the history of Britain's political development? I think he couldn't fail uh, to have a good knowledge. He was also helped, of course, by the historians on the Fine Arts Commission who commissioned the paintings, Lord Macaulay, um, Henry Hallam, um, who were um, very careful in the way that they interpreted history. And it's a good example behind us of the Victorian view of uh, a very passionate, very uh, important scene in the debating chamber. And Charles West Cope has been careful to, to tone down um, the, the view or, or the way that we see the members of Parliament in, in the painting.
That's interesting. That really is quite a good history, and it really is important to the whole development of the Palace of Westminster, both for its works of art, but also for the actual history of what makes us what we are today.